This video is all about using reflection to solve problems in Unity. And in my example scene here, I'm working on my RPG prototype and I'm starting to set up some NPCs. And I set up this character here, this is Evelyn the Brave. And I go through and I link a bunch of stuff, I've set up my script, but then I, I get to a point where I realize, oh crap, Evelyn is not a mage. Evelyn is supposed to be a different class. Evelyn is supposed to be a warrior. And so my, my first thought is, oh, okay, I'll just you know take the warrior script, I'll go to Evelyn, I'll copy the component, I'll go to the warrior. Oh, it won't let me paste the values. Because in Unity, by default, the uh, component context menu only lets you copy and paste between the exact same type of script. So I can copy and paste between a mage script and another one, but I can't copy and paste between mage and warrior, even though mage and warrior both derive from character. So my character class provides a name, it provides a bunch of information, it provides references to stuff in scene, and then both the mage and the warrior inherit that and add a couple things of their own. So really what I want to do seems fairly simple. I just want to take the common stuff from both the mage and the warrior, and I want to copy it between components. And in this case, it's, it's really not too bad. I could go and do it manually and just drag in. There's something like eight different references. But in a, another sort of realistic scenario, uh, I may be working on a bunch of mage NPCs in my game, and at some point I realize, you know, I really want to split the mage class. I want to have, say, I don't know, battle mages and healing mages. So rather than having one character with eight fields, maybe I have 50 characters with eight fields, and I'm going to be spending all afternoon going through and copying over and, and doing a bunch of sort of manual copying of stuff. And reflection will help us solve that in a, a quite easy way, actually. So that's what we're going to be doing here, is we're going to be using reflection to poke through the mage script, uh, I'm sorry, not the mage script, to poke through the character script, which mage inherits, and we're going to ask the character script what stuff it has inside of it, and then we're going to write a little uh, bit of logic that will copy the character stuff from our mage down to our warrior. So popping over to Visual Studio, we see the character class here, and it's just a regular old mono behavior, and it's got a whole bunch of base attributes that all characters in the game have. So this is where we kind of want to put our reflection logic. Since we're gonna be copying things between characters of different types, we are gonna be losing some information. If we're copying from a mage to a warrior, we're gonna be losing anything mage specific. If we're copying from a warrior to a bard, we're gonna be losing anything warrior specific, but we can still copy all of this basic stuff. And then again, the warrior class has a couple of its own things that make it custom, and the mage class has its own things that make it custom. So we're going to work at the character level, and we're actually going to essentially enhance the um, context menu in Unity. So just popping back over, uh, the context menu is this little gear icon and the things in here. So we want to add our own options. We're going to have uh, copy with reflection and paste with reflection. We're going to add those to the bottom. And the way that you do so is to use an attribute that Unity provides called context menu, which you can see here. And what context menu does is it applies to a, um, a method. So we're going to need a method. Um, and we'll have this be, say, public void uh, copy with reflection. And then it's going to need a name that will appear in that context menu. So we'll just have the same thing, copy with reflection. And just to show you, if we pop over to Unity and we let that compile and we go to our mage script, we're now going to see a copy with reflection appear in our list. So let's go through while we're here and we're gonna create another one and that's going to be uh, paste with reflection. And what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to go to one of our scripts. We're going to run this context menu um, bit of logic. We're going to go to our other script. We're going to paste it. So we're going to need to copy some stuff um, between these two, which means we're going to need some reference. Basically, we're going to save stuff here and we're going to load it here. And one thing that we know we're going to need a reference to is the component that we're copying from, um, because these may not even be on the same game object. 
So I'll need to save a reference to the mage component so I can access it when I'm pasting on the warrior component. So we'll go ahead and add that here. And to be able to access it from anywhere, we're going to make it uh, static. And we'll just make it private static. And it's going to be of type character because all of our scripts, warrior, mage, derive from character. And we can just call it something very verbose. We'll call it character we are copying from. So when we do our copy with reflection, we know we're going to need to save the character we're copying from. So we'll go ahead and do that very first in the script. And we'll just set uh, character we are copying from equal to this. And the this keyword just means the instance of our character script, in this case our mage script that is attached to our NPC. This is exactly that. So we've got that basic stuff. Now we need to add our reflection goodness. And what we need to do is we need to get a list of all of the fields, and these are all the fields of our character class that we want to copy. And in our case, we want to copy the public variables, the public fields, and those are the ones that appear in the inspector. And we want to ignore any private fields. We want to ignore any static fields. So the way that we do that, first of all, we need to get a reference to the type for our character class. And since we already know what the class is, we set type. And by the way, we don't have type yet. So we're going to need to be using system since it's system.type. We have type, we'll call this uh, character type. And this is going to be equal to, we're going to use a keyword called type of. And then we're just going to pass in the class name, which is character. So from our class, we have created a type variable that holds type of class. And then we're going to go through and we are going to grab the field info. And if we start typing field info, we're not going to see anything. We need to have another using statement. This is going to be using system.reflection. And this is going to be an array of field info. And we'll just call it uh, character fields. And we're going to grab this from our character type. And we're going to call a method called get fields. And get fields has two overloads. Um, it's, it can either be just empty where it'll grab all the variables or you can give it a set of binding flags. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with binding flags dot and we have a whole bunch of options. We're going to grab all the public variables and then we are going to use the bitwise or to add together to um, uh, two of our enum uh, essentially bitwise operators. And we're going to add into that binding flags instance. And instance means uh, basically instance variables, so basically not static variables. So we're going to grab all public instance variables from our character type, and we're going to save those into an array of field info. Now, one thing to note is that basically what this has saved, this has saved a bunch of metadata on each of our fields. So for instance, it saves the name of the variable, in this case, name or health or mana. It saves the type string into whatever. It saves whether it's public, it's private. It saves all that stuff, but it doesn't save the value in it. So what we have is all the metadata for our, say, our name variable or our shirt variable, but not the currently assigned value of name or shirt. And We'll get to that later. I'll show you how we can extract that information. But for right now, we don't need it because all we need to do when we're copying is we just need to save the list of fields that we want to copy. We have a reference to our character. We need a reference to our fields. And the way that we do that, we'll create another private static variable. It'll be of type field info, and it'll be an array just like we have here. And we're just going to call this uh, fields to copy. And in our method here, we're going to set uh, fields to copy is going to be equal to our character fields that we just discovered. So we're going through, we're grabbing the character, we're grabbing the fields from that character, we're saving which particular script we're going to be copying from, we're saving the fields that we're going to be copying, we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and add just a debug statement um, just to make sure that this is working as planned. So we'll just do a debug.log and we'll just say uh, we are copying and we're going to take our character fields length fields. And let's go ahead and test this. 
So we're going to pop over to Unity real quick. And we're going to go to our Mage script. And we're going to take a look at our copy with reflection. And when we click on that in our console, we see that we are copying eight fields. And if we look through, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight common fields between mages and warriors. So we're good to go. We've got a reference to our mage script and we've got all of our fields. Now we need to paste. And again, we're gonna use some reflection magic to do this. So we've got all the fields to copy. We're just gonna loop through these and we're going to copy them. And I'll just use a for each loop. So for each field info field in fields to copy. Um, so with each field, we need to get the value. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the field, what is the value? So we can say, get value. And it's gonna say, sure, I'll get the value. Tell me the object you wanna get the value from. Because again, I am just a field. I am just this variable. I am not the value of this variable on my mage or my warrior or wherever else. So this is where we actually have to pass in the mage script and then it'll get the value of, for instance, our name field or our health field from the mage. And we saved our mage. This is the character we are copying from. So that's what we stick in here. Character we are copying from. Now, because we're using reflection, it doesn't know, we have a field info, but it doesn't intrinsically know what the type of that field is. So it's gonna do everything in objects. Since every type of thing in c -sharp derives from object, we know that no matter what we have, whether it's a game object or an integer or a string, it's gonna be an object. So we're passing in an object, which is our character, and we're gonna get back an object. So um, we can go ahead and just save this in a variable of type object, and we'll just call this value. So we've gone to our field, we've said get the value from the character we're copying from, save it into this temporary variable, and then we need to apply it to our new script. And we're gonna use another um, uh, method inside of our field info, and this is going to be field.setValue. And this is gonna want two arguments. It's gonna want the object that we're setting and then the value that we're gonna be setting on that object. And the object that we're setting is going to be the warrior, which when we call paste with reflection, we're calling that from warrior. So we can just use this keyword and this will then be pointing to the warrior. And the value that we're gonna set is the value we just copied from our mage and that is value. And that's all we need. We take the value, stick it in a temporary variable, and then we set it on our warrior. And we can go ahead and again, just add a debug message at the end. Uh, all done. So we should, when we call copy and paste, see all of the values from our mage copied onto our warrior. And when we hit copy with reflection, and paste with reflection, lo and behold, it works. We've copied everything from Evelyn the Brave as a mage to Evelyn the Brave as a warrior, and then we can just remove that mage script. And a nice thing about doing this with reflection is we did not have to go through the character and hard code in, okay, copy the name, copy the health. We just grabbed all the fields and it did it automatically. So as we expand the character later on, um, say we want to add more attributes. So in addition to these, we have, I don't know, spirituality, for instance, or if we want to add, say, more objects that the character is wearing, maybe they get a, a necklace and rings and a weapon and all that kind of stuff. We don't have to come back and update our reflection scripts. They just work. And likewise, as we add more classes in the game, we have mage and warrior and we add bard and we add whatever else. We don't have to do anything for that. It just works because it uses reflection, which means it's going to ask our objects what they have inside of them and sort of take care of things automatically rather than us having to hard code things. So I hope that you find this to be a useful example. This is actually a, a script that I've created kind of numerous times for myself in the, uh, the different games that I've worked on, the different projects that I've worked on. Um, I've used it in all kinds of things when I've created my own custom types in menus, for instance. Um, I want to copy all of the, the common attributes from, say, a button class to my own special type of button that I'm creating, that kind of thing. Um, and this really can save you a lot of time. And this is just one way that you can use reflection. As you go on 
hopefully you'll find a few more. And of course, there's a lot of ways that it's being used without you even realizing. For instance, every time you work with JSON, JSON serialization is done with reflection. Likewise, every time you use IntelliSense in Visual Studio, reflection is there. So reflection is this very powerful thing that kind of is found underneath C Sharp and kind of makes C Sharp run. And I hope that you uh, enjoy it and I hope that you find ways to use it in your own projects.